Growing up playing sports, athletic, playing basketball, and always being on the move, you would think that having a naturally, perfectly toned body would come naturally. However, I always found myself in the skinny fat zone. And I never saw my apps until I applied what you will learn here. I didn't look overweight, but you could see my stomach popping out my t-shirts and I just didn't feel comfortable in my skin. So something had to change, but I kept procrastinating because I was very busy in my day-to-day -day life and getting fit wasn't my main priority. In 2022, I dove deep into research. I wanted to know what is actually required to get fit and transform and sculpt your body with a minimum possible effort. Once I found out what I needed to do, I fully committed to transform my body. And all it took was three workouts a week, consciously eating foods that I actually like, and I was even eating an ice cream every day. And that lasted for about six months until I got where I wanted to be. But this is not about looking good. It's about representing your deen, representing Allah Azza wa Jal and the Muslims by being the best version of yourself. Because when you walk out there with a beard and a thobe or a hijab and a khimar, a niqab, they see Islam through you. So it's about representing Islam by being the best version of yourself, by being more purposeful, by gaining strength to worship Allah Azza wa Jal better for longer years, by understanding your body, developing discipline, and understanding what foods does your system, your body needs to consume in order for you to take care of this amana that Allah Azza wa Jal has given you, which is your health and your body. I'm going to guide you through every step you need to take in order for you to transform your body naturally. You will learn about the workouts, about the diet, and yes, on how to enjoy life while getting fit. This isn't just a guide, it's the only guide you will ever need. So yeah, my intention with this is to, to generally give you everything you need to where the only thing you need to do is come back to this video in order for you to, to get information. From amongst those things that I will give you as well is my personal Google Sheet tracker that tracks my, you know, my, my calories intake, my workouts, my, you know, my, my fat burn and even my sleep score, et cetera, et cetera. I will show you guys how to use it as well, as well as my workout, you know, my actual workout and a few other resources in the form of a PDF. Now the trick here and uh, the catch is that it will pop out on screen at one point throughout the video. So you need to pay attention in order for you to catch it. And when it pops out in there, I will give you a link where you can go and download that PDF in order for you to have access to everything that you need in order for you to start your, your progress and in order for you to track it, which is going to be a very important process of uh, your transformation, inshallah. So now when it comes to, to these and the reason why I want to, to do this, of course, for those who are watching this for the first time, I'm, I'm an Arabic teacher and uh, we've run Andalus Institute uh, back here, as you can see on the logo. So, um, so this is not my field per se, right? I'm not a fitness guru or, uh, or, um, fitness enthusiast. Rather, I, I work out and I stay healthy for the sake of confidence, self-confidence for the sake of health, for the sake of following the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu since he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Al-Mu'minu Al-Qawi Khayrun Min Al-Mu'min Al-Da'if and Wa Fi Kullin Khayr and in both of them there is good. That the believer that's strong is better than the believer that's weak and in both of them there is good but it's always better to be uh, stronger. So this is highly promoted by the, the Quran, by the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be healthy, to be strong, to feel good in your skin. And so that's the reason why I'm doing it. And, and when I want to achieve something, I go very in depth into how to do it uh, before, you know, starting my journey and my transformation. I was very confused in terms of, you know, what is it that I don't have to eat in order for me to not gain fat? Do I ha can I eat bread? Can I eat pasta? Can I eat, um, you know, 
fries and uh, and chips and whether you're from the US or from the UK, however you call them. So so everything was very very confusing. You have the keto diet and the carnivore diet and you have the intermittent fasting and you have um, you know, just eating one meal a day and and 72 hour fasting and water fasting and and how to actually lose weight and you have to do a lot of cardio and you have to do work out every day. Everything is so confusing, subhanAllah. So so alhamdulillah, I feel like after going through my journey, I have revealed how to accomplish a great transformation where you feel comfort in your skin with the minimum required dose. The minimum required dose, which is something we will talk about it later. But it's basically understanding that if you want to boil water, the water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. Whether you boil the water at 150 or 170 or 200, the result's still the same. It's still boiling. So you don't need to go to more than 100 degrees Celsius because it doesn't boil more or boil better. It's still boil, boiling the same. So, so that was my mindset going into, into fitness and understanding fitness because I wanted, I have a very busy life and, and I wanted to do the minimum dose required in order for me to get the same result. And so, you know, my approach to fitness is going to be that approach. It's not about overwhelming yourself with, you know, crazy diets that you you starving throughout the whole day or doing crazy workouts or doing crazy amounts of cardio where your hunger levels spike through the roof and now you're super hungry and you don't feel like it's something you can stick up stick to is it generally feels like a punishment to your body so my approach is not that my approach is what is the minimum dose required that we need to do of in terms of food and in terms of workout that will give me the results that i want which is to drop fat right where your you know your your body is defined your muscle is defined and in terms of the sisters as well, for the sisters, it works the same, the same way. What we are going to talk about, it works the same for the sisters. But for the sisters, of course, your body will look different than, than a man. What I'm, what I'm trying to make you understand is that because a lot of sisters they, and a lot of women, they have this misconception that if they work out or if they lift weights or whatever it might be, they will look bulky and they will have muscle etc but it's not it's not that and so this what we are going to learn in this full guide uh works for men and works for women and as you guys can see on screen right now these all the topics we are going to talk about and every time we go over a chapter i will split it in chapters so it's very easy for you to follow it's very easy for you to take notes etc etc and go back to it and every time we go through a chapter i will tick every topic that we have covered until we get to the end of the the last topic, and uh, and yeah, inshallah, I'm looking forward to to sharing this knowledge with you guys. So yeah, let's get to it. من سمة التكاسل صاحي كرشة تجنبها لتحيا خير عيشة. Welcome to the first chapter. The first chapter we have a few topics, and the first one is sincere intention. How could it be any other than sincere intention? when that's the main purpose of a Muslim to have in this dunya. What do I mean by this? Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And having created the jinn and the ins, the human being, the mankind and the jinn, except for them to worship me. Meaning that your existence in this dunya is a ongoing and continuous worship of Allah Azza wa And so anything that you do, whether is, whether the purpose is spiritual, whether the purpose is material, it needs to be with an intention of getting close to Allah, of pleasing Allah, of representing Allah. 
And so what do we mean by having a sincere intention is have the intention that you are getting fit for something that aligns with the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't get fit because you want to be the big guy and big dog. You, know, you want to be, you know, the, the, the girl that, you know, flexes on all the other sisters in the, in the masjid and then you're going to go and rob, rub off people on people's faces that you are fit and they fat and these and that and rather perhaps have good intentions sincere intentions that align with the pleasure of Allah like for example I want to be and get fit because I want to follow the hadith of, of the Prophet ﷺ where he says that the stronger believer is better than the weaker believer or I want to get fit because I have younger cousins and I want them to I want to give them da'wah and they look up to people because they fit. But now I come into the picture with a beard and a thobe and my mushaf on the, my arm talking about Allah and his prophet and they look at you and they can't even look up to you as a role model because you are not in shape. So how am I even going to listen to you about any other topic? When for that person, the main thing, it might be to be in shape or have good intentions. Like for example, as a sister, to please your husband, to always stay in a nice appearance so your husband can protect himself better. As in, you know, he's content in the house because he sees you and you, Allahumma <laughs> mabarik, you know, and so... Your intention needs to be sincere for Allah, sincere for Allah Azza wa Jalla. And remember that certain times, certain times, and many times, just because your intention is not pure, you fall into the greatest of sins in Al Islam. What is the greatest sin in Al Islam? It's not stealing. It's not killing. It's not. hitting some somebody in the face or interest riba without taking away how bad these are the greatest sin in al-islam is a shirk is to do something for other than allah azza wa jal, or to do something for other than allah azza wa jal, with allah azza wa jal, and associating Allah Azza wa Jalla and what he deserves, giving it to someone else or to something else. How does this apply here? You get fit and you didn't do it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Now, it boosts your ego and you get this ujb binafsik, this you're just amazed about yourself. And you keep talking about yourself and you keep looking at yourself in the mirror in the ah man i'm strong and you lift heavyweight ah you yelling and you get this ujib, this self egotistical behavior that allah Azza wa Jal has spoke about in the quran talking about that the person that does this, he says, Have you seen the one that takes his hawa, his desire, his, his nafs as an idol? You idolize, now you, you worship your nafs, your desires, you, I am, oh, I am strong, I am this, I am that. To the point where sometimes you don't realize and you think that you have accomplished this strength based on your own accomplishments or on or that the strength comes from you. So sincere intention, why is it so important? And why all the books of fiqh and a hadith start with the same exact hadith? That what really matters in an action is the reason what you are doing it for, the intention that you have doing the action. 
Are you doing it for Allah Azza wa Jal? Or are you doing it for someone else? And as we said, that's the greatest sins. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَيُّ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah doesn't forgive this sin, which is a shirk, and doing something for someone else. And He forgives other than this to whoever He wills. So make sure your intention is sincere when it comes to accomplishing the goals of becoming strong and becoming fit and looking good. Why do you do it? Do you do it to please Allah Azza wa Jal? Or do you do it because you are worshipping your passion and you are worshipping your desires and you are worshipping your nafs and you are worshipping your inner inclination to your ego and your inner inclination towards you know, praise from people and why are you doing? Ask yourself and all the time renew your intentions. فمن سمة التكاسل صاحي كرشا تجنبها لتحيا خير عيشة. Just taking care of the amana, taking care of the amana that Allah has given you. This body, Allah has entrusted you to take care of it. Allah says in the Quran, ولا تلقوا بأيديكم إلى التهلكة. Don't hurt yourself. Don't throw yourself. Don't eat things that you know are unhealthy to you. Don't overdo something that you know eventually is going to hurt your body and is going to make you weaker. And that's the reason why many things are not permissible in Islam, like smoking, like drugs, like, you know, certain medicine, because it hurts your body. And that is not permissible in Islam. So taking care of your body is highly promoted by Islam and highly promoted in the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad for you to take care of this amana that Allah has given you. Which is giving yourself more possibilities to enter Jannah. How is that? Um, once, Sheikh Ibn Thaymin, he was asked about the expression Tala Allah Umrak or Tala Umrak is a very common expression that in the Gulf countries they they say, right? And so Shaykh ibn Thaymin, rahimahullah, he corrected this expression. He said, no, what's correct to say is May Allah increase your lifespan and your age upon His worship. So having a long life, long lasting life is good. But if it's not a long lasting life of worship of Allah Azza wa Jal, then there is no point. What is the point of all of these news of people who have lived 100 years, 110 years? And in those 100 and 110 years, they haven't worshiped Allah Azza wa Jal, not even one day. What a khasara, what a waste of years. So if you know that something based on medicine researches and based on professional researches that that thing will increase your lifespan. Of course, being healthy, it will increase your lifespan, meaning you will stay healthy for longer, which will allow you to worship more Allah, which will increase your deeds. And your book can be, you know, more packed and filled up the day of judgment. So by being healthy, you are giving yourself more opportunities and more possibilities of entering Jannah. I saw once a video and it was a, an, an obese person that basically transformed their body. And she or him, I can't remember, was asked what made you want to change? And he or she said that once uh, her children or his children came and said, oh, but we want to play with you. We want to play with you. And she or him or him said that that completely hit him so deep that it made him want to lose weight. And so, 
And so that person went ahead and started losing weight. But if you think about this, you know, in terms of your children, how much they will appreciate and how much they will cherish those those situations and those experiences with her father or with or with with their father or with their mother where it was just walking in the park for example and i'm saying this because a lot of people not only they have a belly but they are actually obese and they are very heavy very overweight and so sometimes not only you are hurting yourself but on top of that you are not being the best performing father or mother that you could be to those children let alone of course all the other bad you know things that come out of this like for example you know significant other not being too content with you or you know him looking elsewhere or whatever it might be so so there's so many layer, layers of of bad that comes out of you being overweight and you um, you know not being at the best version in the top performance and peak performance that you could be at من سمة التكاسل صاحي كرشا تجنبها لتحيا خير عيشة. You have an ethical responsibility as a Muslim to be the best version of yourself. People see Islam through you, your family, your children, people outside, you walking with a thobe. You have to have self respect. You have to have muru'a. You have to have honor and you shouldn't feel comfortable looking at yourself in the mirror and every single day you're seeing yourself either the same not becoming the best version of yourself in terms of appearance or perhaps sometimes even increasing in weight and becoming actually worse without talking about all the medical issues that could, that could arise based on having excess weight on you and how that could hurt your bones and your muscles and and it deteriorates deter, deteriorates your your body down the line and so this is to conclude the first chapter which is the pillar and the most important part of this chapter, it was to have sincere intentions. And in this chapter, the first topic that we want to talk about is discipline as a whole. And we are going to keep it short because I want to get into the practicalities as soon as possible. But you need to understand that Right now, you might watch this video, you might see my transformation, you might see somebody else's transformation, something might happen, you might watch. Whatever it happens, you get this burst of motivation. And now, oh, I, I, that's it, I'm going to lose weight. And the thing is, because you are, base, you are basing yourself now on motivation, and you are taking that as a pillar in, your, in the beginning of your journey, Motivation goes up and down. It's just like Iman. Right? Sometimes you have motivation. Sometimes you don't have motivation. So you need to understand that the only skill required to accomplish any other skill or to master any other skill is discipline. So motivation will start the job. But discipline will complete it. So this brings me into the next, this brings me into the next topic, which is being able to delay gratification. Now, you need to understand that it's not the day that you plant the seed that you will collect the fruit. And so a lot of people, they, you know, they adapt these new habits in order for them to lose weight and transform their body. And because they don't see any significant change in the first two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, then they drop out. 
So you will be successful at this based on your strength and capability to do one thing and to do these things that I will teach you for so long without seeing any results until completion. So your main focus should be completing what, what I will tell you to, to complete. Not seeing results, but just complete these 12 weeks. I, that's, I'm not gonna, even going to look at myself in the mirror. I'm not going to... I just want to complete it. So if you are able to tell yourself, I will complete it, and you are able to delay gratification and not focus on the cheap dopamine of seeing results, but actually on completing and just going through when difficulties arise, just going through them until completion, that's when you will get the results. And that is what makes the difference in between the people who are successful at this and just in general in many different endeavors of life. The only difference is that they do what they said they will do. Successful people, the only difference in between you know, failures and successful people is that successful people, they actually do what they said they will do. So if you're able to commit to yourself and perhaps to someone else, but first it needs to be for yourself, that you are going to complete what you said you will complete, inshallah, I assure, I assure you that inshallah, bi'ithnillah, you will accomplish your goals. And of course, I would like to go very in-depth uh, about discipline because it's generally the most important part after having sincere intentions for Allah Azza wa Jal. But rather what I will do is I will send you guys to this video that we uploaded um, a, few, a few weeks back on how to achieve your goals. So I highly encourage you, and I'll put it in the description perhaps of this video. I highly encourage you that after you go through this video and you understand what you need to accomplish, what you need to do in order for you to change and transform your body, before starting, you go and watch that video because it will show you how to put in place a system in order for you to actually achieve this goal, in order for you to be disciplined, in order for you to be able to delay gratification. What are calories? And the simplest way for me to explain what calories are is basically energy that your body needs. And this energy is taken from the food, from the things that you consume. And each different type of food have either more calories or less calories. All right, so, so this energy that your body needs to survive if given too much energy, then it starts to accumulate those calories, those extra calories in your body, they start to accumulate in your body, which appear as fat. So you start becoming fat and obese and overweight if you consume too many calories. If you, cons if you consume too little calories, you're going to start becoming weak because your body needs a certain amount of calories in order, in order for, for you to stay healthy and energetic. All right. So, so calories are energy that your body needs. If you consume too many, it makes you fat. If you consume, consume too little, it makes you weak. All right. So there's three stages that you could be at in terms of consuming calories. If you are at a deficit, it means that you are above of what your body requires to survive and to stay energetic, but below what it requires to maintain your weight and to maintain your, your, your body fat. All right, so that's where we want to be at in order for us to lose our extra fat. Then there is maintenance. Editing the video right now, I'm aware of my accent, guys, so please... <laughs> 
Let me be, yeah? If you are at a maintenance stage, you are basically not aiming either to, you're not aiming to grow in mass, get stronger and bigger. If it's for, for men, you're not looking to get bigger arms, bigger shoulders, bigger back, etc. And if it's for women, you're not trying to, to get either, you know, bigger uh, legs or posterior or whatever it might be. So, so if you are at, at maintenance, you're just maintaining your weight and maintaining your physique and your strength. You're not, you're not going anywhere. If you are on a surplus, meaning you're consuming a little bit over your maintenance number of calories, that's the amount that you need to consume in order for you to build mass, to become a little bigger. So for all of those who have problems in gaining weight, not losing weight, but actually gaining weight, gaining mass, they too skinny, you need to start getting in a cycle where you are, you know, on a surplus. Of course, if you, if you are skinny fat and you, you're skinny, but you have a little, a little stomach, I would first advise to go into a calorie deficit, get rid of your fat, and then start building with a surplus and playing with maintenance and surplus um, to, to gain mass. And if you are a, a sister, for example, who is as well, very skinny, um, you know, you don't have any, any mass, any legs, any, any posterior, any, any mass in your body, and you have a fast metabolism, then you want to get into cycles of surplus or what they call as bulking. You just bulk, right? So, so these are the three stages. And what we are, mostly going to talk about is calorie deficit because that's what I have experienced myself. That's what I have tried. I have never intentionally tried to be in a surplus. I have been in a surplus. I'm probably in a surplus right now because I'm not tracking my calories at the moment. But yeah, I have never intentionally tracking everything, try to bulk or try to, to be on a surplus. However, these are the three stages. These are the three stages. And what we are going to talk about the most is being on a calorie deficit because we are trying to get rid of our fat. So now let's talk about how to be in a calorie deficit and how do you know that you are in a calorie deficit? So right now I will give you the, the broad idea and then later on we will, in a more technical way, and of course with the PDF that I will share with you, which by the way has, ha, you can track, you can track being on a surplus there. You can track as well being on a, on a calorie deficit or on, a, on maintenance. Now, the calculations that are key here to know how many calories we need to consume in order for us to be in a calorie deficit, what we are going to do, which is what I did, is take your, your body weight in pounds times 15. Your body weight times 15. And then what will come out of that is going to be your maintenance calories, your maintenance calories. And out of, that out of those maintenance calories, we're going to remove 400 to be at a, at a regular calorie deficit and 600 to be at a aggressive calorie deficit. So if you have too much body fat, if, if you are, you know, um, if you, yeah, if you have a lot of body fat, like over 25% body fat, then you want to start with an aggressive calorie deficit. Because in the beginning, it's very easy to, to burn fat re really quick. And then you start, it's going, to start be, it's going to start to become a little bit more difficult for you to burn fat. So then you want to go at 400 calorie deficits. And what I mean by it's going to start to become a little bit more difficult, meaning that you might start getting too hungry throughout the day or it might be very hard for you to um, to eat what you are eating in order for you to be in within the range of calories that you need for you to 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 be in a calorie deficit all right so this is the broad idea okay right now it might still be confusing don't worry we are going to make it clear and now go into the power of walking because what i was doing when I, 
when I was in a, you know, aggressive calorie deficit on a daily basis is I was walking every single day in between 10,000 to 12,000 steps. All right. So, uh, so the reason why you walk is because walking is, uh, you know, you burn calories, you are burning calories, but you are not running. So what's the difference that when you walk, you're, it's not that tiring, but you are burning calories. And so your hunger, your hunger levels are not that high. But if you are doing cardio, like running and bicycle and cycle and stairs and, and all these types of cardio, you get home and, and your hunger levels spike up. So now it's very hard for you to maintain the diet that you are, that you are eating, which is eating food in within your calorie, uh, the amount of calories that you are supposed to take to be in a calorie deficit. So when you walk, you are burning calories, but it's not too tiring. So doing 10,000, 10, 12,000, 15,000 steps every day is almost, you know, it's so, it's so simple. It's so, it's so easy. It doesn't get you tired. And by doing that, you will burn, depending on your body weight, etc. For me, it was about 500 calories extra that I was burning, that was burning every day by just walking. And I wasn't getting more hungry and, and my hunger levels, you know, were in, they weren't too high. And so maintaining my diet was very simple, right? Because many times, a lot of coaches, they give you diets that are, they are hard to maintain because it's too many little calories. And on top of that, you are doing a bunch of cardio and burning a lot of, of water from your, uh, in your body. And so what it causes is for you to be super tired, drained, you're super hungry, and it's, it generally feels like a punishment. However, by being in a calorie deficit, walking every day 10,000, 12,000, you are burning every day an incredible amount of, of calories and body fat without really getting too tired. Now, what I, what I used to track my, my steps, it was this little watch here, which is from a company called Fitbit, Fitbit, and it has, a, it has an app as well. I have an iPhone and it tracks your steps, but the thing is, it's not accurate, but, but this, it has a sensor that it, it directly connects to, to your wrist and it tracks your steps. Why is this watch important is because it tracked as well the calories that I would burn. So at one point you get used to it and you know that on average, okay, on average, if I, if I walk 10,000 steps, on average, I'll burn 400 or 500 calories. So at one point I already knew, but this is why in the beginning you need to go through the process of tracking everything. And I know it's tiring, but it will give you an understanding of, you know, if I do this amount of exercise, I burn this amount of, of calories. And if I eat this and I eat that and I eat this, I consume this amount of calories. So later on, you are able to adapt this as a lifestyle instead of having to track everything, etc., etc. So in the beginning, yes, I would highly recommend to track all of this. And you will hear from a lot of uh, people in the fitness space that say, oh, I don't track anything. But the thing is, in order for you to be able to understand what calories are and how much each food has in terms of calories, etc., it's very useful to track everything. If you get this watch, it's going to be very helpful because it allows you to, to track the calories burned and then you are able to put it into the tracker, into the Google Sheets that I will share with you. And you are going to be able to, um, to see your program. All right, welcome to the next chapter, which is about protein intake. So first of all, let's talk about why do we need protein? And in very simple terms and in very simple English, your muscle, your muscles are made of protein mostly. So if your muscles need energy, it would need energy, but it will have to be protein. All right, because fats and carbs doesn't feed the, the muscle for easy 
to, to, to make it easy to understand. All right, so your muscles need protein in order for it to grow and in order for it to stay alive and in order for it to recover after your workouts. So that's the reason why you need to eat high in protein and why you will hear in many, you know, from many fitness gurus, oh, you need to eat high in protein or when people talk about high in protein, yeah, you're not eating in high in protein enough. That's why, that's why you have a lot of fat because most of your calories, you are filling them with fat and carbs and you barely get any protein. So, so that's why you, that's why you skinny fat, right? So in these concepts, we will understand. I will do a conclusion for you guys, and it will become a little bit more, more clear. Now, let's talk about how much protein you need to eat per day. Now, the recommended quantity, and what I have used, is basically 0 0.8 to 1 grams of protein times your body weight in pounds. If I'm 200 pounds times 0 0.8, that's about 160 grams of protein. So every day, that's my minimum, the minimum amount of uh, protein that I have to have in order for me to maintain and be able to grow muscle. There, there, there's a lot of foods that have protein. A lot of foods have protein from vegetables like broccoli, even you'll be surprised that even though the, the amount is very minimum or very minimal, in tomatoes there's the in tomatoes there's protein. In in many different vegetables there's protein. In fruits there's protein. Banana has protein. Apples have protein, but the, those the amount is very little. Everything there is protein in many different things. But there are foods like meat, fish, that most of what it has is protein, All right? So, for example, chicken is mostly protein. Beef is mostly protein. Fish is mostly protein. So, me, for example, these are my main three types of foods that I eat for protein. So, chicken, goat, and salmon. In those six months up to a year that I did my transformation, all I was eating it was beef. And then I did a gut test and it told me <clears throat> it told me to slow down a little bit on beef. So I started eating now uh, different types of of foods with for protein. But at that time I was only eating beef and potatoes. So so about like 500 grams of beef has over 100 grams of protein. And, and, a, and 500 grams is, is not even that big. So, so the thing is that with, you know, eating, yes, you, you can get protein from many different foods, like beans and nuts have proteins, etc. But the thing is, the calories of that food, in order for you to attain a lot of protein from that food, the quantity will be bigger, which will be hard for you to to consume it and the calories will be super high but with with foods like meat for example only 500 grams of of beef or chicken has over a hundred grams of protein already as for for example beef out of an example 500 grams of beans first of all is going to be very hard for you to consume because it's, it's it's beans it's, it doesn't even like 500 grams of beans, a lot of beans. On top of that, 500 grams of beans is way many more calories than 500 grams of protein. I mean, the 500 grams of beef, sorry. And so what's going to happen is, yeah, you're going to reach your, you know, your target of protein with 500 grams of beans, but you will surpass the number of calories that you can have in a day. So that's why you need to be intelligent and strategic, strategical about the type of, you know, how you manage a day of eating for you, for your specific preferences, for your specific likings. 
So me, for example, like I said, at that time when I was doing my transformation, it was all I was eating. It was a shake in the throughout the day with oats and 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 protein and and, and dates, banana. Okay, a, a shake like that. That will be my four hundred calories that I will get in the morning. After the shake, I will get a sandwich as well. I will have a sandwich with salmon, uh, cheese, um, you know, some olive oil, which I will track as well. Very important because sauces, sauces, soda, uh, oil, those things have a lot of calories as well. And you think you put in just a little bit, but it goes up to 200 calories very quickly. So I would very carefully in tracking it would put a, uh, olive oil and I will have my shake my sandwich which that will come up to like 1000 calories then I will have my steak and my potatoes which will come up to another thousand calories around that and then later on in the day I will have some calories left so <coughs> with those calories I will fill it up with something that since I already got my protein now I can eat whatever I want so for me, it would be a Magnum ice cream, a Magnum ice cream. And I would eat a lot at that time as well, a lot of watermelon. Watermelon with, um, I used to put watermelon with yogurt and, and jam, strawberry jam. And I'll mix it up and I'll eat it as a dessert. And these will be my calories at a calorie deficit. And it was very fulfilling. I didn't feel, I didn't starve and, and I could, I, I was doing that every day pretty much. And that's the, the trick as well when it comes to, to your diet. You need to keep it as identical as possible every day so, you, so it makes it easy for you. So now you don't have to think much. That's what you eat every day and you have already tracked it. So you know how much calories you are taking every single day if you eat every day the same so thing. So now let's do a conclusion so let's take as an example me right or somebody who's 200 pounds so we said that you will have to multiply your body weight in pounds times 15 okay and if you're wondering what is this 15 these are 15 calories that are on average your body burns in rest so so your body on average, burns 15 calories per, uh, per pound of your body weight when you are in rest. So that would be your maintenance calories, all right? And some, some days say 11, 12. Me, I did 15. So that will be the calculation for us to know what is our maintenance calories. So, so our maintenance calories, calories based on this weight is... 3,000. Now, out of this 3,000 calories, we remove 600 calories to be in a calorie deficit, right? So we remove 600 calories. So that means that I will have to consume 2,400 calories a day to be in an aggressive calorie deficit. So me eating 2,400 calories a day will allow me to burn fat on a daily basis now the thing though is that i need protein so how much protein do i need so it's my body weight in pounds times 0.8 grams of protein which comes up to 160 but like i said is in between 0.8 to 1 so it means that you will have to eat in between 160 to 200 grams of protein a day and then i will show you soon how to use fitness power which is an app that will allow you to track your food and and make sure that you stay in within range of calories right, so here i am in my ipad and i'm going to show you guys what this fitness power my fitness power is for so i had to download it on my ipad because i don't have it uh, i don't have my phone at the moment it's locked for a few more hours but um from my iPad is a little different. However, inshallah, I'll be able to show it to you. So, so once you download the app, you go to more and then you go to nutrition. 
And in nutrition, you go to calories and you tap on the number down here on 2,500. And here, once you have figured out how many calories you are going to consume in a day, if you are in a calorie deficit or an aggressive calorie deficit, then you are going to come and you're going to click on the blue uh, color for protein and you're going to set it to however many grams of protein you are going to be consuming. So 160 minimum, we've said. And so 160 minimum and 200 max. Right? And then you are going to... I've never tracked carbs and fat too much. I used to aim to be on the 100 grams of fat and and for the carbs i wouldn't track it i would just make sure that i i am in within the range of calories that i set myself to be at which is 2400 with the example that we that we've taken so i keep lowering the carbs until i find the amount of calories that I am going to consume. All right, so now I have the app set as a goal to consume in a daily basis 2,000, 2,500, 2,400, sorry. So now down here we say log food. Now here, for example, today, what I used to do, and, and subhanAllah, if I could show you actually in 2002 if i could show you if i go into for example october if i go august august 2002 so here you can say what i used to eat subhanallah <laughs> literally so what i used to eat as you can see here so gold standard weight that's the protein shake that i used to take yogurt desnatado that's yogurt and uh, my protein peanut butter all right so i used to to do a shake with protein yogurt and peanut butter then here as you can see there was 100 grams of of how much of bread smoked salmon cheese and olive oil and like i told you i used to track the olive oil and of course you're going to track this with a scale so you're going to put the plate on top of uh, of the scale put the sandwich and then pour the olive oil and and however many grams pop up you log it in here Inshallah, I will show you this later. And then as you can see here for dinner, I will have my steak, which will be 629 grams, sweet potato, classic barbecue sauce. Like I said, I will track my sauce and collection Robbie Magnum. And then look at this, even risquetos. Risquetos is chips, watermelon as well. Uh, mermelada is jam. And then yogurt and honey, even honey, I used to track it. All right, so this brought me to uh, 2000 at that time. The total was 2,486, which is pretty much what would be my amount of calories with the example that we are following in order for me to know that I am in a calorie deficit. And as you can see down here, and this is the benefit of getting this, this watch is that I would link my Fitbit app to my Fitness Pal app and it would track my steps. So as you can see here, 471 calories. This is the amount of calories that I have burnt that I've burnt. And so it would tell me the reason why it says remaining 615 is because of the 471 calories that I have burnt. So it's telling me that I can consume 615 more calories and i will still be at 2400 but the point of me doing the steps is to speed up the process so i would be at a calorie dif difference of almost almost a thousand and that's how i was burning uh, a lot of a lot of fat so so in this app now let me show you for example in your case all right so let me give you an example now of how i would uh, track this sandwich that I'm about to to eat. All right, so so first we I'm gonna have some of this protein bread, some salmon, and some cream cheese, 
All right, and I'm going to show you, and some olive oil as well. So I'm going to show you how I go about putting this into, into my fitness pal. Now, I will have to, uh, to play a little around with this, but, but let's say this is breakfast, okay? So I'm going to go and add food. One good thing that this has is that you can scan the code for products that are, that are known or like big companies, like for example, Philadelphia. All right, and as you can see here, it has already the protein, the, it has the, the grams here. So I can choose to track only one gram. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put here on the number of servings, the amount of grams that I'm going to, to, to consume of these. Now this, I will go ahead and choose one gram. And then I will look in the back. How many grams is one serving? Serving size is 55 grams. And so I'm going to type here. 50. 55 grams. Okay, that's one piece of this of this bread. And then for the salmon, I'm going to take this. Scan the salmon. Change 100 grams to 1 gram. And then however much salmon I'm going to put in my sandwich, I'm going to put the number here. So let's say that I'm going to use 100, 150 grams, okay? And if I, if it's different, I can change it later. So usually I do it as I go on, all right? And then I have to track as well the olive oil. But let's first prepare, let's first prepare the sandwich. Now, as you can see here, I have my scale. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the plate on the scale. So anything that goes on the plate now, I will make sure that uh, that is on grams. And now anything that goes on the plate will tell me or how many grams it is. So I have already tracked one of these breads. So I know it's 55 grams. And the app already told me that is 146 calories. I have to renew the weight now. So it, so it shows zero. 18 grams. These 18 grams. All right, perfect. So I have already tracked it. And it told me that it was 29 calories already. And now I will add the salmon. So that's 30 grams. 47 grams of salmon. So I will go ahead and adjust that because I, I put 100 grams. So, and then what I will do is I will put some olive oil so he told me that it's around three grams so now i did this for the first time i put oil for the first time right so i know now on average how much three grams of oil is so next time i might not need to do it but the first time i need to know how now much. what do i do if i want to make myself a shake with things that are that are not trackable like a shake with a banana and uh and some nuts, etc. I remove the actual banana and it tells me 144. So now that I have put the banana in, I know how much weight it is. I come here for lunch, for example. I search banana and it pops up here. And I make sure that the weight is according to what my banana has weighted inside of the mixer so 144 a banana and it tells me is 128 uh calories and so you have 1800 calories left all right cool so now i want to add as well some oats so i add the oats and it tells me is 30 grams i know that this is 30 grams always so so you see the first time yes is annoying to weight stuff but once you do it once and you always do the same thing 
then you don't need to to wait too much you understand how much everything is because you have been doing it for long enough then i add my pecan nut nuts that's 22 grams so i go ahead and i add here oats white oats 30 grams 30 grams as is as stated here so i add it and then pecan nuts pecan nuts and i added 22 so i i adjusted to 22 perfect and now so i add the dates so that's 30 grams of dates so i come here and i look for dates dates are one of the things that is hard to to track but hopefully it gives an approximate hopefully it gives you the the nutrients approximately so i just add 30 grams here all right and i go back now and my calories and the the daily calories that i'm that i have remaining shows up here now there are going to be things like cinnamon that don't have calories so i just add it without tracking and then if you want to exponentially speed up the process you walk 10,000 to 12,000 steps per day and that will allow you to burn an extra 300 400 calories so that means that you are going to be consuming the food so you will have the energy but you will be burning even more so you will be at around 800 to 1000 calories of gap in between what you have uh, of, of fat in your body and what you're burning so it means that you will speed up the process of burning fat now the good thing with this uh, sheet this tracking sheet that i will share with you is that not only you can you can say here i, I just want a regular cut i don't want to be in an aggressive cut or i just or i want to be in an aggressive cut so let's say that you say that you are 200 pounds, right? If you are 200 pounds, an aggressive cut, as we said, it will be 2,400 calories. Now, with my fitness pal, put the calories that you have, that you have uh, consumed here and the calories that you have burned, which you, you will track with the app Fitbit. If you get, if you get the watch, then it will help you uh, immensely and you are going to be able to track everything better. And then my fitness pal, the app as well, will tell you how much protein you have consumed. And the good thing is that it tells you here as well how much, um, how much protein you have to be consuming. All right. And me, I used to track my sleep score. And sleep score, I should have made a chapter to be honest because it's very important. And you will see it yourself. If you are not sleeping well, you are not going to be able to hit records when it comes to lifts you're you're going to be very tired your muscle is not going to recover well so i used to track my sleep score when i used to be like very serious about about cutting fat uh or about you know just my progress in general and now the good thing with this is like if it's red it means that you have gone over and if it's red here on the protein intake it means that you have been under what you actually need so what you what it will tell you here it will do the calculations and it will tell you how many calories you have burned in that month so here with this example i would have burned 1000 calories which means that is 1.38 percent of fat burn so 1.3 percent of fat burn is bringing me closer to be as low as possible when it comes to my body fat and as i show you guys in the images these on average is what you will look like with whatever percentage of body fat you have. All right, so now that we have learned how to track our food, and as you can see, it's been most of the full guide. And, and yeah, the thing is that when it comes to aesthetic results and when it comes to what 
what you see outwards, like the abs and the shoulders and the definition of muscle, is all in is all related to what you eat and how you track it and what goes into your body, basically. So, so that's why we have spent so much on, on diet. Now, let's talk about the next chapter, which is progressive overload, because that's the type of training that we want to do in order to build muscle. All right. So in terms of progressive overload and what it is, is basically overloading your muscles every week with more weight, because just like, like the human body works, it requires pain, it requires difficulty in order to grow. So the same thing with the muscle. If you don't put difficulty in the muscle with more reps, with heavier weight, then it will stay where it's at. So when you lift heavier every week, the muscle gets shocked. That's why you might have heard you need to shock the muscle. So the, bus, the muscle gets shocked and the way how muscles grow is they, they strip, they, they almost break and then they restore. And when they restore, they become stronger. So it's important that we do that on a, month, on a weekly basis and every week we aim to be 1% better, to do more reps of one exercise or to do the same amount of reps but a heavier lift. So that's what progressive overload is, is the concept of lifting heavier and more, becoming fitter every, uh, every week. This would be an example of progressive overload on one exercise. So let's say that I do incline bench and every Monday I do on incline bench three sets and my reps range is four to six on the first set, six to eight on the second set, and eight to 10 in the third set. All right, so, so let's say that the first week I start and I do on the first set, with 60 kilograms, I do five reps. Then I take a, I take a rest three minutes and I go into the second set and I lift 55 kilograms for six reps. And then I go into the third set and I do with 45 kilograms, I do 10 reps, which is the top of the rep range. Now, what does this mean? On the first week, number five of the reps is the middle of the range of reps. So the minimum is four reps. The max is six reps, but I did five reps on the first set. So that means that next week I will lift the same weight, but I will try to get to the top of the wrench of the reps, which is six or above. And once I do that, I increase the weight. Now on the second set, I got to the, the minimum of reps in that wrench, which is six to eight. So I did six. So next week I will, I will lift the same weight, but I will try to get to eight reps, which is the top of the wrench. And then on the third set, I actually got to the last, you know, to the top of the reps. So next week, what I will do is I will, I will increase the weight. Now, so let's go into the second week. For example, on the first set, I did instead of five reps, like last week, I did six reps. So now I am successfully applying progressive overload. On the second set, I did three more reps. So I lifted the same way, but I did instead of six, I did nine reps. And on the third set, because I got to the top of the range of reps last week, I increased the weight by three kilograms and I did eight reps. So even though I did less reps, I am actually better this week because I'm lifting heavier. So I have successfully applied progressive overload, but with a heavier weight. So progressive overload is either with in increments and increase in reps or increase in weight. So the point is to increase in both of those. Once I get to the top of the range of reps, I increase the weight. 
and then I build myself up again to the top of of amount of reps. Now, once you get the, once you see on screen how to get the PDF, inshallah, this will allow you to track your your personal records, basically. So, how does this work? Um, this is the summary. All right, this is the summary, and and this a month. And so you will track your key lifts. The key lifts is the ones that by you getting stronger at it, it means that you are getting stronger. So for example, uh, this is the first week, right? So on squats on the first week, you did uh, two reps of 100 kilograms, for example, and 12, 12 reps of 95 kilograms of deadlifts. So down here, it will tell you how much in this month how much weight have you increased in terms of lifting uh, and what is your personal record so 110 kilograms for seven reps is your record all right and it will do this for each key lifts and then on the summary it will show you your key um you know your personal records basically in each key in each key um key lifts so on squat your personal record is 110 kilograms for certain reps that lives in 105 kilograms for 12 reps incline curls <coughs> is 23 kilograms for seven reps and like that and so then here you can set yourself targets so on squats for example every time you hit a target you go ahead and you go ahead and mark that accomplished. So this is the lift goes for five reps. So on squats, for example, 118 kilograms is, um, is you know, considered beginner level, then intermediate level, and then advanced level. Now, where, where do I get these, uh, you know, these key things from? These, uh, you know, these key lifts from? And what, how do I know what is a good weight to lift here? So there's this website called Strength Level. And in this Strength Level, it have a lot of data from professional lifters in the world, etc., etc. So here you can put your, your, you know, your details and check for each key lift what you should be usually lifting. So for example... Uh, let's say that you are able to do, uh, you know, four reps for 100, for, for 100 kilograms on the bench press. And let's say. And so then you, you press calculate and it tells you at what level you are on, basically. So as you can see here, it tells you this, the strength level boundaries are. It will tell you your bench press, what it is. It's novice. Okay, perfect. And then it tells you beginner level is 139 kilograms or 139 uh, pounds in this case. Novice level is 187 pounds. Intermediate level is 246 pounds. But basically in this website, you can check the standards of lifts for somebody your weight. And that way, you now can go back to your tracking sheet and set goals for yourself. Okay, so I want to reach to novice level this year. I want to reach to uh, intermediate level, whatever it might be. So these are examples that I have set for myself to, to achieve. And, um, and yeah, you can set yours based on, on that website. Um, now, in terms of the amount of workout per week that you need to do, it goes back to what we were saying in the beginning, which is what is the minimum dose required? What is the minimum dose required? All right. So without going into researches and, and so on, some experts in a, in a very rough um, quotation, I will say that on average, you want 10 to 12 sets for each muscle group per week in order, in order for the muscle to grow. So we can accomplish that with three days a week. Now, this is how it's going to look like. Monday, I did chest and I did arms and a little bit of shoulders. On Wednesday, I did leg and traps, okay? 
and on Friday, shoulders and back, light chest and arms. For those who find the PDF, I will introduce in that, I will add in that uh, this type of format so you can just print it out and follow through. And every week you will track your progress. As for those who don't find it, <laughs> then uh, you guys are masakin and you guys can copy from this. So on Monday, what we, what we did or what I did is incline bench or incline uh, dumbbell. DB is dumbbell bench. Uh, flat barbell bench or weighted dips, weighted dips. Okay, this is this is this exercise or that exercise. Both exercises work and yeah, it's for the same muscle basically. Incline dumbbell cur curls or pinned pinned bicep bicep uh, curls. Incline dumbbell triceps skull crushes. Face pose or bent over flies. Now. This is for Monday. Um, so for incline bench and incline dumbbell bench and, and these two exercises that you see is in case you, for example, the skull crushes is a very good exercise. But me, my when I do that, my uh, left, okay, my left elbow hurts. So I cannot do the skull crushes. So in, instead... Um, what I would do is I would do with the machine, I would do the ropes, okay? But whatever exercise works the triceps, you are, you are free to do. Now, the different, the two exercises, incline bench or incline dumbbell bench, is because at one point you will reach uh, a plateau and you are not going to be able to lift heavier or to do more reps in that week. So if you change exercise, the muscle adapts differently and it becomes, it becomes stronger, many times so in order for you to to uh yeah to to get over hitting plateau in terms of your personal records and heavy lifts you can change exercise now for wednesday and a lot of you won't like this but you need to work out legs as well and getting stronger in your legs will automatically make you stronger on your upper body as well so on Wednesday, me personally, what I did is Bulgarian split squats. Um, I did, I did a Romanian deadlifts, but I did it on the trap bar, on the trap bar. And leg extensions, I did. I didn't do much CC squats, and I did calf races, regular calf races, on the machine, and I did trap bar or leaning shrugs. I did leaning shrugs like this. And then on Friday, standing press. I didn't do too much of dumbbell shoulder press. I, I mostly did standing press because it was the most difficult for me. And I felt like that was making me stronger. Uh, I did weighted pull-ups. I did side-to-side um, -side push ups and, and hammer, hammer cur curls and lateral raises for your shoulders. So, so this is basically my workout, okay? Now, if you have two exercises, it means do this or that, all right, in each, in each exercise. So, so on Monday, you would do one, two, three, four, five exercises. On Wednesday, one, two, three, four, five exercises. And on Friday, the same thing, all right? Now, in terms of the numbers, what is the numbers next to, next to, uh, to the exercises? So in on Monday on incline bench, if you see four, six, six, eight, eight, ten, it means take a weight that you are able to do four to six reps. Then on the second set, take a weight that you can do six to eight reps. On the third set, take a weight that you can do eight to ten reps. So lower the weight as you progress in each set. Now, the goal is that next week, if this week I did, for example, four reps of this weight and seven reps on the second set and 10 reps on the third set, then my, the next week, my intention is to reach the top of each set. So six, eight, and 10 with that same weight. And once I reach that, I 
increase the weight. All right, so if you see on flat barbell, for example, 6, 8, 8, 10, same thing. You pick up a weight that you can do 6 to 8 reps and 8 to 10 reps. And if there is 6, 8, 8, 10, it means it's only two sets. If you see on inclined dumbbell c- curls, 4, 6, 6, 8, 6, 8, it's three sets. And like that. If you can see on face pulls, face pulls or bent over flies, you have... 12, 15. So do 12 to 15 reps of whatever weight you can do those reps with. Then pause for 10 seconds. Do four to six to six reps again. Pause 10 seconds. Four to six reps again. Pause for 10 seconds. Four to six reps again. And that's the whole set for that exercise. Then on Wednesday, you can see four sets of six to eight reps. So pretty much almost the same weight. Just make sure you are in within the range of six to eight reps. Romanian deadlifts, same weight per set, three sets of 10 to 12 or three sets of four to six. Leg extensions, three sets of eight to 12 reps, same weight. And yeah, everything is pretty much uh, self-explanatory. Now on Friday, same thing, four to six or six to eight. I mean, four, six, six, eight, that's two reps. Or if you do the second exercise, do six, eight, or eight, eight, or six, eight, with the weight that you can do six, eight to reps, or with the weight that you, and then with the weight that you can do eight to ten reps, and then with uh, weighted pull-ups, weighted pull-ups, five to six, just five to six. So basically, a weight that you can do five reps, and then on the second set, you do you do six reps. Then, as you can see on side to side push-ups. You do, you do three sets of six to eight per side. Or you do three sets of fly press um, in between eight to 12. Then hammer curls, you do three sets. Hammer curls, you do three sets of the same weight, eight to 12 reps. And as for the lateral raises, the same thing. As uh, the face pose, you do 12 to 15 reps, you pause 10 seconds, you do 4 to 6 reps, pause 10 seconds, 4 to 6 reps, pause 10 seconds, 4 to 6 reps, uh, and, pro- and, uh, and that's it. That's the end of, the, of, the, of that set. Alright, so this is uh, in terms of, of the first 12 weeks. The last few things that I want to mention is a few important things. So right now, right now, you might ask yourself, okay, how do I do all of these exercises? What is, what is inclined bench press? What is hammer curls? What is et cetera, et cetera. So all of these exercises, I remember the first time I, I looked at those exercises as well. I didn't know what it was. And, and those are very common. Those are titles of very common exercises. So you can type them online. On YouTube, for example, how to do hammer curls, how to do such and such, how to do inclined bench. And there is going to be a bunch of tutorials that show what to do and what not to do in regards of that exercise. And once you do it once one week, two weeks, then khalas, you will know it by the name, inshallah. Uh, another thing that I wanted to mention is, so I posted a picture of my before and after. And, and there was... <laughs> And there were some brothers that, uh, that said that that's an enhanced physique, meaning I took steroids or, um, or whatever it was. So, so, of course, you know, it tells me already that that person is not fit at all, probably doesn't have any experience in, in working out or anything like that. But just to reassure you guys, I never took any steroids or anything. Uh, now, one thing that I, that I took, though, throughout this journey... In, in that year, those, you know, six, seven months that I, that I was very focused on, on applying progressive overload and whatnot, it was uh, creatine. Now, creatine is a substance that your body produces. However, you take it because it doesn't produce enough for you to, to, uh, to grow or for you to, to get stronger and stronger. Is it necessary... 
No, it's not necessary. Is it beneficial? I wouldn't be able to tell you either because uh, I haven't seen the difference. But one thing that creatine does though, because it helps you retain a lot of water, it helps you look bigger and your, your, muscles, your muscles look bigger. However, right now, I don't take any creatine anymore. Uh, at that time I took it, it was good to, to get you a little push uh, on the last rep, you know, on, on, that ad, ad, on that ad additional rep to, to be on a progressive overload. And it was beneficial in that, uh, in that sense. Another thing that, that I take until today is protein. Now, protein is found in the foods and, and it doesn't have anything unnatural, just like creatine. It's just that you take it because it's, it's very hard unless you, you know, that's your lifestyle to get protein from foods only. Is it necessary? No, it's not necessary. If you are able to get your protein, your 160, 200 grams of protein from food only, from beef and tuna and sardines and, and broccoli, et cetera, et cetera, then you don't need protein. But those protein shakes, those big pots of protein, it helps you because it's, they are high in protein and low in calories. So it helps you fill up the grams and target that you have for your protein, but it doesn't fill up uh, the calories so you can still eat other things to fulfill your, your pleasure. So, so no, I never took any steroids. I don't plan on doing it either. And, and in general, I would like to say that, um, you know, like I said earlier as well, I've never bulked. My, my target is not be big, being big, etc. It's, it's looking athletic, right? So if you think of, of body types, I like the, the athletic, but the, the 100 meter runner body type, right? And that's, that's what I think that aligns the best with Islam, which is being fit and athletic where you can run you fast, but at the same time, you, you know, you look good because your body fat is low. So that's what I think aligns the best with Islam. If tomorrow something pops out and you need to, to run a sprint, but you are always bulking and you're this big guy and it's going to be very hard for you to, uh, to, to manage that. So, um, so in general, I don't look at, at fitness and set those goals and those targets to be big and bulky and, and have big muscles, but rather be chiseled, shredded, athletic, and you're ready to go anytime, basically. If you got all the way here, first of all, I highly appreciate you. You know, while editing, I get this anxiety where I think, oh, this is going to be boring for them. This is going to be boring. But certain things is very hard to explain without, without, you know, just speaking and letting it, letting it there roll without any edit. So if you got all the way here, please, I want to see you in the comments. I want to see those loyal viewers in the comments say, this is how I will lose my belly fat, or this is how I will become stronger, or this is how I will, uh, you know, get chiseled. Whatever your goal is, and if you feel like these tips will help you achieve that, let me know in the comments, inshallah. I hope you have seen the PDF. And if you have, if you have seen it, I will see you there to give you all the goodies. Life. Remember to watch the How to Take Control Over Your Life, which is my life protocol. It's the things that, has helped, that have helped me attain $1 million in a year, that has helped me do my body transformation, that helped me learn the Arabic language, and many other different accomplishments that I did in my life. It was with the help of this protocol that I teach in this video right here. Go and check it out, inshallah. And I will see you guys in the comments. Wassalamu alaikum.